I wanted to share my experience with taking a hero's dose of magic mushrooms over the weekend. Uh, so I have tried microdosing in the past and also kind of like macrodosing as well. Each experience has also either been very therapeutic for me or also has allowed me to unwind and been in a, kind of like a recreational fun experience, something that brought good-hearted energy to my life. I was always worried, kind of nervous about taking a hero's dose of mushrooms, being that a hero's dose is about five grams of mushrooms or more. Uh, that just seemed like a lot to me. And I had experienced three grams, four and a half grams, and I just didn't really see, you know, like if those could do so much for me, what could a hero's dose do for me? But I wanted to share my experience because it was pretty profound. I weighed out 5.55 grams of mushroom. I made it into a tea. After I made it into a tea, I started setting a nice um, energy for the experience. I set an intention. I kind of created a ceremony where I lit some stage and cleared the energy of the room and all that hippie woo stuff. Uh, and then after that, I stripped down completely naked. I consumed my tea. From there, I climbed into my hammock and kind of just waited until it kicked in. And I was doing this all by myself too, so it was a little intimidating kind of to do something uh, so profound and something so far out of my comfort zone on my own. But I feel that I was in the right headspace to do so. Being that I took it in tea form, it kicked in all at once, probably about 20 minutes after I took it. I was right there at heaven's door. It was abrupt, it was all of a sudden, and it was very intense. I just remember kind of having my eyes open and slightly seeing visuals, but when I closed my eyes, the visuals were really profound. The feelings that I was feeling were super profound. And thus, I started in like a very severe journey where I was crying. And I cried quite often <laughs> during this journey, uh, just releasing stuck, pent up energy that wasn't really serving me anymore. A lot of the tears were flowing and I had no idea exactly where they were coming from. Sometimes if I focus my energy and my thoughts to certain people in my life, I would start crying and releasing, you know, trauma that I maybe had experienced with them. Perhaps like, it, for instance, my parents. I thought about my parents a lot and I cried a hell of a lot. And I just released a lot of stuck energy that wasn't serving me anymore. But it wasn't just all crying and releasing trauma either. Uh, a lot of it also was just being very euphoric and very happy and very appreciative of life. Um, I had my dog with me, Babu, who you see running around in the background, and he would come up to me anytime I started crying, either tears of sadness or tears of release or even tears of joy, and he would come comfort me, and every time I would pet him and touch on him, I was also reminded that life is very fleeting. That was something that was with me a lot on this experience is that life is fleeting and I would look at him and I would start crying because I love him so much. I love you so much and <laughs> I would start crying because I realized even though he's such a big fixture and part in my life that he won't be around forever. And that was a very humbling experience. And then I also related that to other people within my life that I love and appreciate and people that I've had struggles with as well that they won't be here forever and that I need to make peace with them. So taking the hero's dose, the five grams of mushroom was intense um, and it was like therapy for me. You know, really intensive therapy helped me to work through a lot of shit, a lot of shit that I didn't realize I had to work through. And it helped me to release a lot of energy I didn't realize was stored within me that was kind of just taking up space and making me feel like shit. 
I had a lot of gratitude for life during this experience too, which coincides with the idea that life is very fleeting. Uh, I thought about the people that I love quite often and thought of how much I appreciate them and what they all mean to me. And yes, there was a lot of really beautiful visuals and being in a hammock was pretty cool because I almost felt like in a cocoon, like a butterfly and that I was going to emerge this whole new person. And what did happen was after I did emerge from my cocoon as a butterfly, <laughs> uh, it, from there it got much more intense. At this point, once I got out of the hammock, I had an ego death in which everything that I considered about myself, I started questioning. I started questioning who I am. I had old insecurities that I had as a child come up about not being good enough, not feeling like um, I have a lot of friends, kind of feeling lonely. And I had to confront all of these things, all of these masks that I have for myself and kind of let all this shit go. And that was the biggest thing I had to understand in this experience was just letting go you know, who it is that I think I am and just understanding that there's so much more to life than all of these labels that we create for ourselves and all of these defense mechanisms and tactics that we use to kind of keep us small or to keep us in fear or to also keep us from connecting to our fellow human beings. And while the ego death was pretty intense, uh, I feel that that was probably one of the most important things about the whole journey itself, aside from realizing that life is fleeting and having moments where I was crying and releasing pent up anger and stress and frustration and fear was just that I was able to really evaluate myself in a healthy way and understand that I'm not the persona that I appear to be on social media and I'm not the mask that I wear all throughout life. There's somebody deep inside that's much more than any of that bullshit. There's something better, something more. There's just me, you know? And that was really important for me during my trip. And I realized that the idea of an ego death and releasing a lot of trauma and fear and angst and family ancestral baggage can be, can be a hard thing to have to face head on. Uh, so I encourage anybody who's listening to this to really tread lightly with a five gram dose of mushrooms or more. I think that you have to be in the right headspace and I think that you have to be willing to not only look at this shit that is coming up during your journey but also to integrate the journey back into your life once you know all the mushrooms and everything clears out of your system. How do you take what you learned on your journey and use that to integrate back into regular life and be a more compassionate, beautiful, understanding, open-minded human being that's more in tune with themselves. So it's something that I feel is really intense and I think it's something that a lot of people really need and need to experience. But I also feel that, as I said, you need to tread lightly before ever doing a heroic dose of mushrooms because it really can unravel who you are at the seams and it can cause you to really reconsider a lot of shit in your life and some people might not really be ready for that so if you are interested in trying a heroic dose if you have done it i would love to hear your experience in the comment section below or any questions that you might have if you like this video please go ahead and give it a thumbs up share it with your friends spread the love, spread the awareness that mushrooms can be therapy, they can be therapeutic. It's just not something that you use recreationally to, to trip your face off. It is really important medicine. Thank you for watching. Peace.